What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 times WWE heels went too far. Now, sometimes uh, there can be a storyline between a baby face and the heel, and the heel will do something really dastardly to really gain that true heel heat. Back in the day, before people knew you know the ins and outs of the business and knew that all of it was a work a lot of times they would say and do things and would literally try to portray that even in public places as the bad guy and people would legit feel some type of way and want to attack the heels and it's it's really good now can they go a little bit too far some could say that but it just depends on the situation me personally i, I think if the families and wrestlers involved with the storyline are okay with it you know you can kind of get away with certain stuff but sometimes wwe has said and done some things where you're like damn bro i, I know he's a, supposed to be a bad guy but god damn that that was downright evil so we're gonna check out some of them instances appreciate all the love and support y'all have shown on the channel let's get right into this one man. it's all about larger than life characters and dramatic storylines but sometimes the bad guys take things to a whole new level. From yeah. personal attacks to shocking betrayals, these moments left fans speechless and superstars reeling. Join us today as we look at heel WWE wrestlers who went too far. Following WrestleMania 20, JBL experienced a significant push and entered a feud with Eddie Guerrero for the mm -hmm. WWE title. Despite his efforts, JBL was unable to capture the title at Judgment Day 2004. Amidst their rivalry, JBL appeared at a SmackDown Live event and assaulted Eddie in the ring. In a distressing moment, JBL confronted Eddie's mother and mm -hmm. forcefully touched her shoulder. She collapsed immediately, suffering a heart attack. Mm -hmm. While it was scripted as part of the storyline, fans were outraged by the disturbing scene. Mm -hmm. The one-legged wonder, Zach Gowan's WWE journey. And it's just one of those type of things where you push that line. And I personally don't have a problem with it, but there are some times where I'll be like, Ooh, that was a little bit too much. But I get it. I understand they're trying to evoke that pure emotion of hatred from the fans because that's what you want. That's what you really want journey reached its peak on August 19th, 2003, oh, when he faced the imposing Brock Lesnar. Where's that guy one, man? This highly anticipated match became a significant this moment brutal, in wrestling bro. history. Lesnar unleashed his full oh force, God, leaving bro. Gowan battered. A forceful chair shot from Lesnar caused Gowan to bleed <laughs> profusely. Then Lesnar executed the F5, resulting in Gowan's one leg colliding with the ring pole. This was Gowan's brutal, mother, bro. watching from the front row, felt deeply concerned for her son's well-being, adding to the emotional intensity of the moment. Lesnar's aggression didn't stop there. A few days later, he viciously attacked and choked Gowan mm -hmm. before cruelly dumping him down a flight of stairs. Brock, don't do it, Brock. Don't do it. Oh my god, bro. Bro, he was trying to kill this guy, bro. At WrestleMania 15, the big boss I'll never forget that, bro. I was like, bro, this nigga needs to be stopped. He is a one-legged man. It's all He's already dealing with a lot. What are we doing? To pack somebody up like that in front of your moms, you got to go You gotta go outside and get it. You know what I'm talking about. You know what, what get it means. You got to go outside and get it, bro. Or at least come to the next show and, and, and you know, do what you got to do. I'm not going to say what, but, you know. Boss Man faced off against The Undertaker, leader of the Ministry of Darkness. Following his victory over Boss Man, Undertaker used a noose to hang him from yeah. the cell roof, simulating his demise. The graphic and unsettling nature of this spectacle drew criticism from yeah, fans and wrestling observers, with many deeming it distasteful and ill-advised. While the act Yeah, it was that was definitely one of those. Ugh, I don't think they should have did that one. That one was kind of that's all I'm gonna say about that one, bro. Reinforced Undertaker's image as a dark and ominous figure. It also underscored the risks of pushing boundaries too aggressively for shock value. Yeah. Muhammad Hassan's character was controversial from the start, mm -hmm. but things went too far in 2005. 
A segment featuring masked men attacking The Undertaker shortly after a real-life terrorist attack yeah. led to widespread outrage. The timing and nature of the segment were seen as highly insensitive and inappropriate, causing a significant backlash. The character was pulled from television, and Hassan never recovered his career in WWE. And that was just on bad timing. That was Vince just not reading the room well at all until people say, hey, yo, what the fuck? Like, you're dealing with recent terrorist attacks. I would kind of just stay away from that for a while. Like, I wouldn't even go that route, but Vince didn't read the room. Marking one of the most controversial moments in WWE history. As WrestleMania 29 approached, CM Punk embraced his role as a full-fledged villain after losing the WWE title. Mm -hmm. He wasted no time in targeting The Undertaker, setting the stage for an epic showdown at the event. However, in a controversial turn of events, yep. Punk crossed a line by mocking the recent passing of The Undertaker's manager, Paul Bearer. This included Punk's act of stealing Bearer's iconic urn and taunting the dead man with it. Yep. Despite Punk's attempts to rile him up, the Undertaker prevailed at WrestleMania, reclaiming the urn and securing victory in the process. Which I think, obviously, I think all parties, for the most part, that I know of, and I could be wrong, all parties involved were okay with it. And it was it was it was a way to build up a a, a match, you know, with CM Punk being uh, that evil heel and, and trying to get in the head of the Undertaker. If there's anybody that can get in the head of the Undertaker during that time in that situation, it would have been CM Punk. On October 22, 2018, oh, Roman Reigns one. announced he was relinquishing his Universal title due to his battle with leukemia, a moment that deeply affected the WWE Universe. That same night, yep. in a shocking twist, Dean Ambrose turned, turned heel, heel and viciously attacked Seth Rollins, igniting a chorus of boos from the audience. Ambrose's betrayal was a devastating blow, but he took it even further shortly yeah, after. Yeah, this is wild. During a he promo, said. he referenced Roman Reigns' illness, insinuating that everyone gets what they deserve. I was like, Whoa. This comment crossed a line, making the storyline intensely personal and controversial. Reflecting on it months later, Ambrose admitted he couldn't believe he actually went through with that promo. And now we're all gonna get what we deserve. I mean, I mean look at Roman. Yeah, that for was Roman's wild. Part, for what Roman did in the shield. That was kind of wild. Bro. He has to answer to the man upstairs. That was wild. As WrestleMania bro. 22 approached. That was super. Like, this, this is when I say some instances, I would not do it. Only because you take, just take Roman out the situation, you know, there are people that are dealing with leukemia and, and all types of different cancers, so I watch the show. So it's one of those things where I get it, you, you don't want to be too, too, I guess you could say, friendly when it comes to like being a heel, like you don't want to be like, oh, I don't want to offend anybody because that's the job of a heel to offend. But I think it's just, I wouldn't have said that. I wouldn't have said that only because of just how real it was. Um, I probably would have said something else to really get that heel effect, but I would have kind of stayed away from that because, I mean, that's a real life thing. But I get it. It does elicit that reaction, but at the same time, it, it, it's, a, it's a double-edged sword. You kind of got to be careful how you pr approach serious situations like that coached Rey Mysterio having won the Royal Rumble match was primed to compete in the world title oh, bout at the prestigious Randy. event yep. however yep. Randy Orton had different intentions on an episode of Smackdown he confronted Mysterio and proposed a match with the Wrestlemania opportunity on the line in a shocking moment Orton addressing Mysterio's late friend Eddie Guerrero callously claimed that Eddie was not in heaven but in hell this statement elicited boos from the audience, prompting Mysterio to retaliate with a low blow. Ultimately, Mysterio emerged victorious at WrestleMania 22, securing the world title in a triple threat match by pinning Randy Orton and dedicating his win to Eddie Guerrero. Eddie's yeah. down there. In hell! And he didn't want to do that. That Vince told him to say that from what uh, reports are uh, been said and what he said he didn't want to say that but Vince told him to I mean this is young Randy Orton in his career trying to really get a footing he had no other choice but he 
didn't want to say that. Vince wanted him to. And I'm just like, once again, I get it. I get it. I understand. It's just some of them can be a little bit like, oh, I don't... I don't know about that, bro. I just, I, I don't know. In 2007, during a heated rivalry with John Cena, Randy Orton took things too far on an episode of oh, Raw. Yeah. Cena's father, John Cena Sr., this was in the was front row to support Randy. his son. Oh, After the God. main event, Orton dragged Cena Sr. over the barricade oh, and delivered God, a brutal punt bro. kick to his head. The attack left fans and critics shocked, questioning if WWE had gone too far. This moment remains one of the most controversial in WWE history, Highlighting Randy Orton's ruthless nature as a heel. Uh, me personally, that was tough. That On the was road to WrestleMania, and that worked, in my opinion, because it just proved how evil Randy was. Kicking a man's father, bro. You have to go ahead and get it. Just gonna have to get it. Simple as that. Just gonna have to go go and get it, and I'm gonna leave it at that. <laughs> In 28, Chris Jericho found himself in a heated feud with WWE champion CM Punk, setting the stage for a showdown fans had long dreamed of. While the matchup itself was already highly anticipated, a storyline was added to intensify mm -hmm. the rivalry. During their promos, Jericho took things too far, delving into the personal struggles of Punk's family, including his father's battle with alcoholism and his sister's issues with drugs. Despite Jericho's attempts to rattle him, Punk had the last laugh, emerging victorious at WrestleMania and retaining his title. Because your father is an alcoholic. This was good for you too. And isn't it ironic that the very alcohol that you crave is the same thing that ruined your childhood? This is so good. Your father's an alcoholic. This was good, Your bro. sister is a drug addict, and you're going to end up just like him. It's inevitable. This is At so the bragging good. rights to and obviously, you know, CM Punk's cool with it, you know, but that was good. Bring that. That's a different situation where a heel is bringing in some personal shit to really get under the baby face's skin. I'm OK with that because obviously the wrestler is cool with it. They obviously I'm sure, you know, hey, go ahead, do what you got to do. I'm OK with that. And CM Punk kind of was that character at that time of like, bro. I, I will eviscerate you on this microphone. So you better come with some heat or I'm going to cook you. I'm going to bury you before we even get to the match like type shit. So 2009 pay-per-view. Poor Batista Ray. Batista turned heel by attacking his longtime friend Ray Mysterio after losing a fatal four-way match for the world title. They faced off at Survivor Series 2009 where Batista hit Mysterio with three Batista bombs, leading the referee to stop the match. Poor, poor Ray. In a subsequent episode of SmackDown, Mysterio invoked Eddie Guerrero's name while trying to reason with Batista. Batista coldly responded with, Eddie's dead, mm -hmm. shocking the audience, given his close relationship with Guerrero during his final days. Mm -hmm. Batista later this. defeated Mysterio in a street fight on SmackDown, but lost a number one contender's match against him for The Undertaker's world title. Look at Eddie, man. This is good, though. Eddie's dead. I'm not thinking about Eddie. I'm not thinking about what we've been through. I'm there not... you have it, guys. This, Heel that was WWE good, wrestlers who went too far. Be sure to subscribe and smash Heel the Batista. bell icon so you don't miss out on more wrestling content. Love it, bro. Hey, y'all go subscribe to Burn It Down. I'm going to link down the original video down below. Y'all go give him a subscription, man. I like that. The What he said there wasn't too bad. The Randy thing, that was recent. Eddie had recently passed, so obviously it was still kind of fresh. I definitely wouldn't have said that. But this was different. And, you know, Batista in his mind, bro, he's gone. I'm not thinking about him. He didn't say anything disrespectful. He, he said the truth. Eddie was dead. I'm not thinking about him. Don't try to use Eddie to try to get me to think about the good times. I don't give a damn about that. I don't give a damn about what we've been through. Like, Batista was fed up, and I loved it. I loved that was That was one that was okay. A lot of these on here weren't too bad, and then there's some that just, when you really look at it and the timing of things, uh, they probably could have said something else or did something else because it, it does look kind of wild. But comment down below. Let me know some other times where you remember 
uh wrestling heels kind of going too far in your opinion y'all let me know down below but i appreciate all the love and support y'all showing on the channel road to 150k and i'm still gonna be the youtube wrestling champion of the world appreciate y'all keeping with me see you next one peace